This illusion is called Make It Count. Thanks for clicking on this video. If you like it, consider leaving a comment or leaving a like. That is, after you subscribe. If this isn't your first time on my channel, then you know this is yet another headless painting. I don't know how many of these I'm going to make, but at this point I feel like they have a mind of their own, slash a life of their own at this point, because they don't have heads, duh. This one's meant to convey, or so I hope it conveys to you, a bit of preciseness, a little desperation as well. As with many of these headless figures, I love the poses. They always come to mind in like a very striking pose. And the flat white background makes it feel very spaceless, abysmal, in a cold, sterile way. Which is a nice unintentional perk of refining my style to this now. I think through this process, I've sort of honed my skill. And I don't have any pictures to insert. My use of black, or rather my return to black outlining, you'll see in this one and my previous videos with these sort of figures, has re-emerged from my much earlier painting style. I'd have to guesstimate it was back when I was 10 or 11. I've never really been drawn to depicting people in a realistic manner. Back then, I painted people who were green, blue, red, really every color I could use but a flesh or complexion tone. So it's not really a surprise that my art style has evolved to this. To describe the way I use black, it is to outline the faces, figures, and to like define the features or this was back at the time when I was 10 or 11 and it was kind of, it created like a cartoonish sort of thing. Um, and while I was working on this painting, I was tempted to outline with red rather than black to see how it would look. Um, back when Juicy Ink made videos on YouTube, I saw her do it a couple times, and I always loved the effect it created, but I really, I'm glad I didn't do it because I think I would have ruined this. I don't think it would have worked. I don't think that that would work at all unless I used a color that was like similar to black so and not like gray but like a very dark blue or something like a dark dark red like a burgundy-ish if you get what I'm saying now I've already mentioned <laughs> boss cat too many times and I'm not like obsessed but I don't know my mind really grabs onto things and holds on really tight so unless I talk about this it's not gonna leave me something that stood out when I watched slash listened to a clip of Madonna talking about her experience dating Basquiat in the 80s. She had said when she had broken up with him due to his um, substance abuse that she she was made to return the paintings that he'd gifted her. Then she also said that he painted all of them black so they were lost to the world, you know, not just to her. What I took from it was, I doubt I'd ever gift a boyfriend, if I ever had one, will have one, I don't know, Oof, I can't, i not at that place at all, <laughs> I don't think I would ever do that, I would never give them, um, my art, I don't think, now that I think about it, I don't think I'd give a family member my art, not at my age, or the stage in my art, I did when I was younger, as like most people do, you know, that's kind of what you do when you're a child anyway, but once you're older, it's like, nobody wants that, <laughs> But I think, like, from my childhood experience and, like, up to now, that's probably why I would never do it again. Um, for that time, back, it was pre-pandemic, when I saw a therapist, she mentioned something like that, too. Like, why don't I gift my family members my art? And I couldn't think of a reason why at the time, but it's also because I'm not good at thinking on the spot. I was like, oh, you threw a curveball at me. I'll have to get back with you. Of course, now, after the fact, I'm like, duh, 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 duh. <laughs> I do that so much. Not that you guys know me in real life. I'm notoriously mute. Notoriously mute. My God, I, I cannot speak properly. Um, I'm notoriously mute and forgetful. 
we could be talking and I'll have a thought. Like, the words will be just on the tip of my tongue. And then I'll forget, partly because, I don't know, I feel like people talk over me a lot in my, I don't know, in my real life. I'm like, oh, I would like to say something, but you just don't stop. And the moment has passed. So if I say something now, it's like, why are you still on that? My life. Anyway, um, I have to write things down or I'll lose them in my cyclone and or vortex void thoughts. Then I'll approach a person hours later and pick up talking about a subject like we never stopped. Meanwhile, the sun is an entirely different place in the sky, so. Back to the painting gift thing. My family, it really only consists of my mom and my sister since my nan is dead. I'm not really close with the rest of my family and they've not really been involved in my life. My sister doesn't really get my art. She literally only grasps the tiniest minute details of things I show her, like, is that a leg? And then she's like, oh, the eyes, the eyes are here. It's pointless. My mom, being that she's my mom, I don't, I don't think moms really count. I'm sorry, they don't. She bought a painting for me, but that was to prevent me from selling it because she liked it so much. She believes in me, you know, which is very nice, but I don't know that she gets my art either. It's more proud mother, I think. And uh, I hard, it's, it's hard for me to see it as anything more. And honestly, I think my mom thinks I'm weird too. She's not artistically inclined, so I know that she does her best. <laughs> so onward to the other thing. I can't imagine a boyfriend wanting my art. Like I said, I, I'm not anywhere near boyfriend territory with anybody ever in my life, no. If anything, thinking of that, like, ooh, the prospect of it, it aroused my old fear of my art being destroyed, defaced, or, like, made fun of. Oh, and those people, those people who buy thrift store art and paint over it, they give me nightmares. They really do. Every time I see those videos, I'm like, I have to tell you two, don't show this to me ever again. Oh, and not, not to rant or go on a sort of tangent, I don't know if it was Vincent Van Gogh or if it was Da Vinci. It was some very large artist, somebody that notable. They now have the technology to see through layers of paint. Uh, my sister my sister told me about it, I think. They saw under layers of the top painting to see another image underneath. And I'm like, is that is that not a violation of an artist's privacy? They don't respect the dead people at all. It's just like when they discover people's journals, I'm like, naturally, you know that you're crossing a line. But I guess not. And so they're dead. We need to know about them, I guess. And then, oh, Audrey Be- <laughs> I'm just sorry. I'm sorry not to go off. Audrey Beersley, and he was an illustrator. His dying wish was for his art to be destroyed because he feared the consequences of it, being that it was kind of lewd and nude. <laughs> he was really worried that it was going to affect his ability to get into heaven, you know? Things like that really shake me, you know? And the thing about it is, like, no, it, his dying wish was not respected, clearly, because people still see and know of his art. Back to Madonna. She's such an interesting person in her own right, but she was in, like, some very interesting scenes and social circles. I mean, to have been able to date Basquiat and Tupac. I mean, and also not to define her by the men that she dated, because that's... That's gross. That's misogynistic. But, like, what a time to be alive and still living, you know? And before social media, so she was really living, you know? really, and it's, Or so I'd imagine in a more authentic time, there probably were still, quote-unquote, posers, you know, of that scene. But if you take anything away from this video, it is art, truly art. And art goes on, so I will in my next video.